hiding away, dodging questions, scared of her own shadow. Yeah. The lady's not for turning up. <laughs> I now call the leader of the opposition, Keir Starmer, with his urgent question. Yeah. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To ask the Prime Minister to make a statement on the replacement of the Chancellor of the Exchequer during the current economic situation. <laughs> Mr Speaker, with, with, apologies, with apologies to the Leader of the Opposition and the House, the PM is detained on urgent business. I must hear the answer of why the Prime Minister is not here. The Real House. I'm afraid you will have to make do with me, Mr Speaker. The, the Prime Minister has taken the decision to appoint my right honourable friend, the member for South West Surrey, one of the longest serving and most experienced parliamentarians, as her Chancellor. Their overriding priority is to restore financial stability in the face of volatile global conditions. We will take whatever tough decisions are necessary and have made changes to the growth plan, which the, Chancellor, which the Chancellor is waiting to update the House on as soon as this urgent question finishes. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and thank you to the Right Honourable Member for Portsmouth North for answering the question put to the Prime Minister. I guess under this Tory Government, Everybody gets to be Prime Minister for 15 minutes. <laughs> the country, Mr. Speaker, the country is in an economic crisis made in Downing Street. Yeah, yeah. Because they've lost all credibility, government borrowing costs have soared, mortgage rates have ballooned, markets need reassuring. And there is long term damage that can't be undone. Once you've crashed a car at 100 miles an hour, you've damaged it for good, yes. and you're going to be paying much more on your insurance for years to come. Yeah. And it's working people who will pay, yeah. <laughs> left wondering if they can afford to stay in their homes if their hopes of owning a home haven't already been crushed. Yeah. Yeah. So now it's time for leaders to lead. Yeah. Yeah. But where is the Prime Minister? Yeah. Hiding away dodging questions, scared of her own shadow. Yeah. The lady's not for turning up. <laughs> now it's time to be honest about the mistakes they made. Yeah. But what does the Prime Minister say? My vision is right. My mission remains. I sacked my Chancellor, but I can't tell you why. Yeah. And now is a time for consistent messaging. But what do we get? A Prime Minister saying absolutely no spending reductions. Yep. A Chancellor saying there will be cuts. Yeah. A Prime Minister saying she's in charge. A Chancellor who thinks he's the CEO and she's just the chair. Yeah, yeah. How can Britain get the stability it needs when all the government offers is grotesque chaos? Yeah, yeah. How can Britain get the stability it needs when instead of leadership, we have this utter vacuum. Yeah. Yeah. How can Britain get the stability it needs when the Prime Minister has no mandate from her party and no mandate from the country? Thank you, Mr Speaker. Let me start by saying I'm quite quietly confident that the Leader of the Opposition will not have his 15 minutes of yeah. questions raised on economic policy, I will defer to the Chancellor. Honourable members, honourable members will want time to question him fully and hear the detail. I do not wish to eat into that time. Our constituents will want to hear about the issues facing them, their bills, mortgages, benefits and their businesses. So I had wondered just what else the Leader of the Opposition wished to discuss in this UQ that would delay such an important statement. In his, in his urgent question, he paints a contrast, so let me paint one too. The decision taken by our Prime Minister would have been a very tough one, politically and personally. 
Yet she has taken it. And she has done so. She has done so because it is manifestly in the national interest that she did. She did not hesitate to do so because her focus is on the well-being of every one of our citizens. It was the right thing to do, and whether you agree with it or not, it took courage to do it. In contrast, in contrast what the Right Honourable Gentleman has done today at this most serious moment took no courage or judgment or regard to the national interest. Three years ago, Mr Speaker, three years ago, when this Parliament was paralysed by Brexit, a general election would have been in the national interest, and he blocked it. Today, when the country needs some stability and urgent legislation to put through cost of living measures, and while we are in the middle of an economic war levelled at every school and hospital in this country, he now calls for one and weeks of disruption and delay. We will take no lectures from the Honourable Gentleman on working in the national interest. I could point to his frustration. I could point to his frustration of us leaving the EU and campaigning for a second referendum. I could point to his support for the Right Honourable Member for Islington North and his positions on NATO, or his arguments against us leaving lockdown or our involvement with the EU Vaccines Agency, all against the national interest. And nor take any lectures on consistency of policy or messaging. The Right Honourable Gentleman has abandoned every single one of his pledges during the Labour Leadership Contest. Look, but I think the country also wants to hear what's being said. If I can't hear, they can't hear. So can we please listen to Leader House? I'm sure it's coming to the end now. Leader the House. I am, Mr Speaker. Which is why, even on our... Order, order, order. Mr Perkins, if you want to go and get a cup of tea, I'm more than happy to pay for it. Which is why, Mr Speaker, even on our toughest and most disappointing days, I will always be proud to sit on this side of the House. We will put the national interest first. Now let's get on and hear from the Chancellor.